Hey guys, thanks for watching here at the Pledge YouTube channel over at youtube.com slash Patrick Ledge. I'm going to be playing Pledge Place, the second episode after, well, sec obviously second after The Walking Dead. I'm going to be playing through the Stanley Parable, as you can see on your screen. Um, this is basically taken from my stream, so you hear me talking about uh, to viewers and stuff as well on the side. I'll repeat as much as I can, but uh, let's just hop in a game, shall we? I think that's the main thing. Just going to immediately jump into the game. Let's get this going. Is never the end. The end is never. Never the end. Is never the end. End is never the. Oh, you know And you guys don't actually see the loading bar, which is really nice. It's like right, right here. Let's see. No, this is Patrick here. <laughs> the standard no, this is Patrick. It always works very well. Uh, I'm so curious about this game, to be honest. Like, I, I seriously cannot tell you because I've heard a lot of different things. Um, I, I just can't wait to experience it myself. I uh, picked it up last week with the intention of playing it on stream. So here I am. Let's, uh, let's have a little bit of a look. It's almost done loading. You guys can't see, but it's almost done loading. Oh, and um, for people's information, um, like I said, the plan was both... Uh, well, I'd say three games, technically. Stanley Parable right now, Wolf Among Us later, and uh, The Walking Dead Season 2 as well. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Duh. Duh, right? Um, Xorodas asks in chat, have you played the demo? I have not played the demo. I genuinely have no idea what I'm doing. Um. Go right, left click, right click. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. The question is, do I... No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Do, do I, f like, this is my question immediately, is like, do I just follow the narrator? Is that what's happening? Just keep walking, I guess. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. <laughs> Clever. Did I just keep walking? I guess. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. I 
I'm already liking this. This is cool. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Is the is the narrator too loud? By the way, guys, I like I cannot um, test obviously. Do not alter. Can I? Is there like a whiteboard marker somewhere? Oh, cool. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Th that sounds to me like I can do something here, right? There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an <laughs> empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Okay. Ugh. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. That guy? Guys, no backseat gaming, right? Don't be, don't be like, no, stay in, or something like, just... Obviously, I don't know anything. Just keep that in mind. I genuinely don't know anything. Nice office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, eight, four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Stanley just sat. Stanley simply began entering random codes into the keypad, knowing full well the sheer statistical unlikelihood that this would ever result in a correct combination. <laughs> If he knew that the combo was 2845, it would be another story entirely. But no, no, the 2845. <laughs> Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. It's the... Um... Wait, where's the... Oh, there it is. I was waiting for that thing to open. Is it gonna close? It's the, um... The quality of the narrator uh, uh, reminds me of the quality of the narrator in Bastion. If you guys haven't played through that yet. It just made me... It cracked me up all the time. It was so nice. I don't want to go in... Uh... Loading. Nobody told me this was going to be a horror game. <laughs> hey, you thought I did Descending doing, deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now? when for years it had never occurred to him. This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. <laughs> Alright, so we have the left and right door 
uh, with the broom closet. And we had up and down staircase. And now we have mind control cylinder escape. So far, I've done everything the guy says. Absolutely everything. Yeah, let's keep on that trend. Is this Cerebro? This looks like Cerebro right here, if this is like a... The lights shape. rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Well, I can't go back, so I... So I'll go forward. See what that says? Employee observation protocol? That's what it says. It's this. Just a bunch of numbers. Now the monitors jumped to life. Their true nature revealed. Each bore the number oh. of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated <laughs> to right, accept so it up. blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power <laughs> over another human life. For nice. he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Four. I'm just looking real quickly because there's a couple of options here. I see a four, a button with the four. There's a blue PC that I didn't see yet. What's this? Console disabled. There's this. And there's a facility power thing. And there's a red button. There's a five here. Where's one, two, and three? Do I, do I see that? There's one there. There's three? There's one and two here, I guess. Alright, one, two, three, four, five. Let's press the buttons in order. Hey Frank, how are you doing? No, one more. We'll see. Like, if nothing happens, it's still cool. Maybe there's like a border or something. Uh, I don't want to cross that. Who knows, something might happen. Get a little bit paranoid, like nothing... Like, nothing happened. One, two, three. In, pressed in order. Okay, 
just a power button. You know, I'll just, I'll just walk in here. Is it going to close? And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything oh, it off. stood for. There's an option as well. rising chill of uncertainty was it over yes he had won he had defeated the machine unshackled himself from someone else's command freedom was mere moments away and yet even as the immense door slowly opened Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, oh, wow. what to do. Or how to feel. Actually, really pretty. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was perhaps a thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Thanks for showing me, uh, game. My game capture should be a little bit bigger. There you go. Alright. It's one, I guess. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, All Stanley right. thought to himself, is to wait. So Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here, I can be happy. Forever, I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed, then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. <laughs> I should check the time on the, the clock every time. Alright, so... Uh, um... This is what we figured out so far. This game has multiple endings. I'm confused about exactly what the hell is going on. It's pretty cool. So let's continue. Let's see what our options are. So I pretty much followed him. Apart from the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that I pressed. I followed him exactly. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. 
This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Hmm. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it I all see. in. Forrester says, Patrick, did you notice some of the level was missing? I did, yeah. It took me a lot shorter to get to the dull side of the door. Yes, really, really worth it being here in the room. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. It's that, um... The way I'm thinking about it now, is that the narrator might be, like, in your brain, as like a mind control guy. In some way. Okay, I need some sort of a pass. Find that anywhere. Yeah, this doesn't look good at all. Well, look, Stanley. I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really. I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. I think we all know I'm going through the blue door. <sighs> Aha! Perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. I still don't think we're communicating properly. <laughs> Stanley walked through the red door. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road? You look behind. Yeah, well, don't I just see it. Stop you. Suddenly the look behind shows up. Don't, don't do that, Ethug. Like I, I already made. I already was gonna look around the room, but don't do it. Don't do it next time. All right. You see, there's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Yeah. Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange... Prepare yourself for the best part of this game is backseat gaming. What would have made Sorry, this nice. game better? That's very what frustrating. Do Don't see? do that. Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Was this hair before? Those orange... I'm gonna have to double check next time. 
It is very tempting. But I'm not gonna do it. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. I, I, I love how, as a player, you're trying to... A one? I mean, I can understand if you had reservations, you saw ways the game could be improved to more fully express itself mechanically and artistically, but a one? That's not even helpful. What am I supposed to do with that? Uh, but I guess it isn't my place to judge. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. I love that 98.7% is more attractive than Stanley. <laughs> it is very tempting. It's very tempting. I'm just going to keep going through the same door. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. <laughs> this game is insane. In this oh my god, there's a baby in fire. Towards danger. You <laughs> click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game. All about the desperation and team of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. You heartless bastard. Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? <laughs> because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that <laughs> might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? <clears throat> I don't know if you guys can see it on the screen, but like yes. the button's still this there. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> well, Stanley, is this any better? At last, the one thing you've always desired. A game I had absolutely nothing to do with. <laughs> but is it enough? Tell me that, Stanley. Will it ever be <laughs> Well, I'll say this. I'm done making things for you. From now on, I will only create to fulfill a greater artistic purpose. Watch this, Stanley. I'm going to build a house. Yeah, I guess... <laughs> We're starting a new pledge place, guys. <laughs> playing, I'm playing Minecraft now. Here. No. Here. And then... <laughs> Let's see, what does it need? I, uh, yes, of course. And just to finish it all off... A door. Yes. Yes. It's complete. I made this standing. Look at it. Gaze upon my work of art and feel ashamed at your own inadequacy. Ah, but you've only seen it from the outside. You've only gotten half the experience. Please, step inside and make yourself comfortable. Is there anything that I can do to mess him up? Can I just not step inside? Just just not do anything. Is he going to start talking again a little bit? 
That's what I'm waiting for. I'm having a staring contest with the narrator. Doesn't look like it. Can you jump? No, you can jump. Simpico. You can jump. Doesn't look like it. <sighs> you know, I'll think it over. I'm... Can I pause it? There you go. I need to make a very quick phone call, guys. So I'll be back in just a little bit. But obviously when I return, uh, Plitch Plays will continue with Stanley's Parable. I'll be right back. Five minutes. Five minutes or something.
All right, I'll return. Let's have a look. Uh, sorry, guys. Sorry for the delay. We're now back. Um, it took a little bit longer than I expected, guys. I do apologize. Check it real quick. Just one thing. I'm a nutritionist on the phone, so I just have to double check that. Um, there you go. Yeah, that's all good. Um, thanks. Music next time, please. Yeah, I actually forgot about the music. I was on the phone and I was like, oh god, I forgot the music. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, that's the way it's going to be, guys. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, or thanks for waiting, I should say. Let's continue. Let's continue. Alright, so we left off, so we're waiting for this. I guess we're gonna have to go through the door. Isn't it grand? Isn't it perfect? It could only be better if... Wait, that's it. We must rebuild it out of diamond. Diamond everything. Yes, yes, yes. Come along, Stanley. We have to go mining. I'm so confused. For anyone who's played Minecraft, you don't want to go in there. <laughs> Not without control of anything. Oh my, it looks like it's going to get a bit dark. Have you brought a light? Yeah. So it's not going to be ideal, is it? Oh, no, 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 no. This is far more open-ended than I had in mind. I'm looking for something more narrow and linear. Something that makes you feel utterly irrelevant. This won't do at all. One out of five. Even the diamonds couldn't save this one. Okay, new game. All right. <laughs> yes! I don't even know what this game is, but I love it. You, trapped in a glass box with no way out, listening to me talk. Oh, it's inspired. I couldn't have done it any better myself. What is this game even supposed to be? I can't figure it out. Okay, now I'm curious. Let's go find out what the hell this is. I can speed report. I've done that in the past. I love that there's the actual ambient sounds as it's well. It's a puzzle. Critical thinking, Stanley. Your forte. What? Genius. No, actually, you know what? I think that's plenty. I really don't care much to see... I was actually looking forward to playing Portal. Games, ...and I highly doubt you're any wiser for the experience. Which is why, rather than continue to waste my... Oh. Are you here? You can pretend you've beaten the game if it makes it any richer for you, but as for me, I've had enough. So, why don't you get cozy in this room? I don't know if I was supposed to do that or not. I generally wasn't, but I was suddenly thinking, like, hey, I might be able to go through something there. So let's do it. And it worked. I have the feeling of just jumping down. Like hair. Or hair. Like just just you know what? Screw it. Ah! Alright. Where the hell am I? 
They said the two doors. Wait, I can go back to my room. I think that, I guess that's what I'm supposed to do, is like, just go all the way back to the room. There you go. Trying to click things. There's no way you can get to all the endings in four hours. I'm so confused. I'll just walk the other way, I guess. I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice, and if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. Go. 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 Yeah, the amount of endings is a spoiler. Look, so this All time... All co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. And so this time around, right, the first time... The first time I finished... It was... This room, this room wasn't here. This room wasn't here, right? So... And I just entered for the... Th with the left and the right door. This wasn't here either. It's good to keep in mind. It's good to keep in mind. It might mean something. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Um. I can go to the left and go. I, I'm gonna go and check the broom closet. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. It was here, right? Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Not again. I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage you. I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to be patient and wait for you to finish whatever it is you enjoy doing so much in this room. Please, Okay, but this is the sec... He, he recognizes that I've been here before, right? This is... It's the second... Like, this is the second time I entered the room. And he referenced the first time. That's quite impressive. Oh, you can crouch. I didn't know that yet. Doesn't look like I can pick anything up. I'm curious, there must be something. Huh. Coming to a stand, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Right, so downstairs.
But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? What? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something Am I going crazy? Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. I guess I'll None just have to keep on walking. Sense. And as Stanley pondered this, Here he we began go to again. make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? I why already did doors checked. close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he walking. came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job all I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss, I have an office, anymore. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real, I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. <laughs> Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, 
for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Nice. It's the same time, every time. It's the same time. Alright, back at the start. Um... Uh, I'm just looking at the time real quick. Yeah, uh, in order to cut the thoughts for YouTube, I'll, um, real quick, I'll say thanks for watching. Obviously, part two is going to come up any second. Obviously, don't go anywhere. And, uh, we'll be right back. More Stanley's Parable right here on Pledge Plays on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Patrick Pledge. Thanks for watching.